I've experimented with various peptides recently. Um, to be honest, they are so potent. Cut to the chase, evidence based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Today, as you can guess by the title, we're going to take a look at Andrew Huberman's peptide stack as he discussed with Rhonda Patrick on her podcast called Found My Fitness. I, like everyone else, have my own impressions on these two, but in general, I respect them both, their research and opinions, most of which I think are founded in legitimacy. However, as always, we find ourselves asking, where do we draw the line between biohacking and realism, especially when so much of what's popularly discussed is accessible only to the rich and famous? That said, let's address Huberman's peptide use because peptides are the sole focus of this channel, weirdly enough. And as such, if you like this sort of content, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It goes a long way. Let's get into the clip. I've experimented with various peptides recently. Um, to be honest, they are so potent in certain directions um, relate, that impact my sleep that I've, I've started to kind of back away from most of them, but I'm very curious about a lot of them. So to be frank, we have touched on how a lot of these peptides are purported to assist with sleep, and hence, due to the predominantly popular sleep difficulties that persist in a world of stress and technology, many turn to them for that purpose. And a lot of the benefit is indeed anecdotal, whether we're discussing growth hormone augmenting peptides or delta sleep inducing peptide, as research does hint they affect sleep, but not in the particular ways that we may think or even anticipate. Um, there is a ton of animal data on BPC-157. So much interest in BPC-157. Very little, if any, human data. That worries me. But what worries me more is that BPC-157 appears to be angiogenic, meaning it grows blood vessels and that can be great or it can be problematic depending on what those vessels are feeding. Um, We've actually talked about this plenty of times before, and it's refreshing to hear that Dr. Huberman and I share the same worry when it comes to these angiogenic peptides, like BPC-157 and TB-500. Angiogenesis is the formation of new blood vessels. Yes, this is clearly a facet of such that could enhance different features of recovery. However, it's also a very clear characteristic of cancer's ability to proliferate and spread. It's the feature that gained us a shout out on Dr. Chris Rayner's discussion on peptides and targeting vascular endothelial growth factor, which BPC is theorized to modulate, is actually a proposed target of chemotherapeutic drugs. So I echo the same concerns with Huberman and BPC, especially when it comes to long-term use. I'm not saying BPC-157 is bad. I'm just saying this is my kind of caution about it, and I hope to, and I will have um, I was taking, I have a calf injury on one leg that is due to some nerve damage from a skateboarding injury, repeated skateboarding injury years ago. I was trying to bring that back. Um, and actually it's amazing. I, I was injecting it directly into the calf for a couple of weeks and I actually found I could, um, and, and longer actually, it was a couple of months by the time I finished because I was doing it infrequently. And I found I actually was able to um, finally contract that calf meaningfully um, while running and through weight workouts in a way that brought some of it back, but it was it was pretty badly atrophied. So this is a controversial idea that we've gone into before as well, in reference to the debate between localized intramuscular versus subcutaneous injection of BPC-157 for certain injuries. And although people report they feel localized is preferable for skeletal muscle injury, from a pharmacokinetic and data-derived standpoint, research hasn't exhibited that. But in the same vein, I would imagine that given oral bioavailability and direct transit to the stomach and beyond, that for gastrointestinal injury, you could argue that oral ingestion predominantly makes sense. Um, and then some of the other peptides like sermorelin, testimorelin, the um, so-called growth hormone secretagogues that stimulate growth hormone release. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not on growth hormone. My concern about sermorelin was that I would take it. Um, I took it for infrequently over a period of time. And I noticed that my sleep, I got a lot more deep sleep as measured by my eight sleep, by my eight sleep, but that it obliterated my rapid eye movement sleep, like completely gone. And then I, so I stopped taking sermorelin. 
So these results are not entirely unfounded, and I imagine Huberman tracked his sleep with the Whoop Watch, his sponsor that he respectfully stopped himself from plugging in this podcast conversation. Growth hormone augmentation is predominantly thought to promote slow-wave sleep, and children with growth hormone deficiency have been seen to have prolonged stage 1 non-REM sleep. And on top of that, research has indicated that administration of growth hormone-releasing hormone, which sermorolin and tesamorolin are analogs of, did have sleep-promoting effects effects predominantly in younger individuals, mostly with regards to stage 2 non-REM sleep. Moreover, ghrelin, which agonizes the receptor responsible for the action of many of these GHRPs, favored enhancement of slow-wave sleep activity. On top of that, GHRP-6 predominantly affected stage 2 sleep, and MK677, or ibutamarin, a non-peptide agonist of this ghrelin growth hormone secretagogue receptor, resulted in increased slow-wave sleep as well. All of these findings of which support Huberman's observations. So this is pretty much the extent to which Huberman conversed about his peptide use on this podcast. I do recommend watching the whole thing. It is enjoyable if you do like these sorts of conversations, but most of all, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. If you're looking for a way to further support the channel, details to the Patreon will be on the description below. Most importantly, have a great day. Cut to the chase, evidence-based, pull up a chair, let's Get this straight, peptide buddy. He's your peptide buddy. <laughs>